this is going to play Star Wars as text. So what I'm going to do is connect to my remote Raspberry Pi. So we're going to do SSH stew at, and I think it's called uh, SM hyphen dash two, which is um, Station Master Dashboard two. I was using this Raspberry Pi for testing other stuff. We're now connected to the Raspberry Pi, so I will press Control L, or you can just type clear, and it will clear the screen. And now if we type NeoFetch, it will change, because it's no longer saying Ubuntu on Windows, it's saying Debian Linux on a Raspberry Pi, because we're now connected to the machine behind me on the desk. So keep that in mind from now on. We're connecting to this remote Raspberry Pi that could be anywhere in the world. This could be a Linux server somewhere in the cloud. Whatever, it doesn't matter. It could be anywhere on the internet. It just happens to be on the desk on the other side of the room. We are connected to that. Right, we're gonna press Control L to clear the screen again. Now this tool is one tool you really wanna get used to using this next tool. It's called TMUX. It stands for Terminal Multiplexer. This allows us to have multiple terminal windows within one window. It's absolutely brilliant. This is like a must have tool if you're you know, routinely connecting to remote devices to perform tasks, but yeah, remote, remote Unix type devices to perform tasks. If you installed Tmux, and to do that, you just, you know, apt uh, install uh, Tmux or whatever your package manager is. It might be, yeah, yeah, what's the others? I can't remember, but whatever. Just install Tmux, it's already installed, so I'm not gonna do that. We are in Tmux, we know we're in Tmux because we've got this green bar across the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is go full screen. So I'm just gonna click full screen on this main terminal window. I can press F11 if I wanna get rid of the borders as well. So now we're proper, fully immersed into this terminal, and we're now in Tmux. Why do we wanna use Tmux? Well, we can, we can do anything that we can normally do in a terminal, such as run HTOP, H-T-O-P. So HTOP is like task manager on Windows. You know, you can go in, see what's running, stop programs, stop processes running, terminate things. You can just press up and down, press F9 if you wanna stop something and press enter. That will stop it running, not gonna do that now. But what we'll do is we'll leave Tmux running, but hey, imagine this is my WiresX server or something I've got running, and I'm running it on the command line, I wanna be able to see what it's doing, and I just wanna leave it running permanently. But hey, I wanna be able to do other stuff as well. Well, let's split the screen up. Press Control B, let go, press Shift, and then the double quote sign. On the UK ISO keyboard, that's number two. So what I did there is I pressed Control, I pressed Control B, then I let go, and then I press Shift, and then the double quote sign, which just happens to be the number two on the UK keyboard. What that has done is give us, it's given us this second window, so I can now type Neo Fetch down here as well, and we can run commands while the other thing is still running. Now, let's say we wanna move the split between the two screens. Press Control B, but hold it down, and then immediately press up or down and you can move the splitter around. So we'll move it right down to the bottom, and I'm gonna press Control L to, uh, to clean out the screen. And what that gives us, it gives us just this handy little window down the bottom here, just to run commands every now and again, look at files, whatever. If we're, gonna, if we're trying to run a compilation script or something, we can quickly get into there to type a command in uh, without having to touch the mouse. If we wanna get back to the top screen, I will press Control uh, B, and then I will press the up arrow. We are now in the top screen. I can press Control C and uh, stop that from running. I can go back in and press H top, it will start it up again. Press Control C and it's gonna stop that running. If I wanna, you know, I could list files up here, so I can do LS minus LH. The reason I'm doing H is because I want it to tell us how big the files are in human readable format. So that's gonna put 4, 4K, it would say megabytes, gigabytes, uh, if it was you know, a, a bigger file. Let's say we wanna split this now because we wanna edit a file. So what we'll do is Control B, let go, and then Shift a percent sign, which on the UK keyboard is number five. We've now got two main screen areas, left and right, and we've still got our area down the bottom that we can quickly jump to if we need to run a command. Now, the reason we might do this is, let's say up here, if I go into the Qt folder and go into uh, six, 
91 ls cd source. And I'm just going to open a file in Nano. I'm going to open CMake lists and just leave that there. So imagine we're editing that file or we're just referring to it because we need to know what it's, it's expecting in order for us to do something on the left-hand window. So while that's still open, we can control B and left. We are now back over here on the left-hand side. And let's say we're going to create a new file. Well, I've got stew.html up there, so we'll, we'll open that in Nano. Obviously, you can use other editors, but this is the easiest one to use if you're not familiar with Linux or Unix. So we're going to we're going to open up stew.html. This was a file I was testing with earlier on, and uh, that's basically just some boilerplate HTML code that we're editing. So now we can edit that, and we want to save it. We'll just press Control S, and then what we could do we could Control Tab, go into our Chrome browser and test it or whatever. But all this would stay here when we Alt Tab back. And if we want to jump down to the bottom screen while we're editing this file, then we Control B down, and we are now down here. So for example, you might you know if you're editing a JavaScript uh, thing, you might run MP m run watch or run prod or something you know you might run a command like that to to get it to work so that you can actually view it in a web browser or whatever or you, or your c compiler or whatever it is you're working on but the point is we don't use we're not using the mouse here and we're jumping around all of these different panes very easily now the beauty of this approach is we can do some cool stuff now obviously if you're not a programmer none of this means anything to you but i'm just demonstrating the fact you can have different panels uh, all over the place. But let's actually load something up pretty cool. So if we control B and split this screen, and then we're going to do TEL net, and I think, uh, what is it? T O W E L dot B L I N K E N L I G H T S dot N L. Now, what this is going to do, I'll leave it on the screen so you can read it towel dot blink and lights dot N L. Press enter. This is going to play Star Wars as text, as ASCII art. It's going to show the whole movie in this window, but as ASCII art. You'll see it as it, as it goes along. It's quite interesting. And uh, it just dem I'm just demonstrating the fact that we've got multiple windows open here, or terminal sessions open, and they're all completely independent, and I can very quickly jump between them. So we're up here in the top window now, and if I want to move that splitter, I just press Control B, hold it down, and move the up, the up arrows, and I can move left and right as well if we want to make the editor bigger on the right-hand side. So Control B, and then right arrow. We're now over here editing this file on the right-hand side. If I press Control X, that will get us out of that. Uh, we can also Control B, Shift, and then uh, double quotes or two. And that will split that screen as well. So now we've got four screens and the one at the bottom. And if we want to close one, we just exit. And we can exit that one as well. And then the Star Wars and the other one are still going to be there. Now, if we want to split it again, Control B and then Shift F5. Uh, sorry, Shift a percent sign, which is number five here. And we have that. So cool things that you could run. Obviously, you can run HTOP, which will show you the processes running on your computer. Uh, we've all, we've already looked at Neo. Uh, let's get that running again. We've already looked at NeoFetch, N E O F E T C H. That shows you the processes running on your uh, computer. Didn't want to do that. Control B and then five. And what else can we put in here? I mean, I've forgotten what you can do, but there's loads of things, isn't there? That's just top. So basically, the point is when using uh, Tmux within your remote session, you can do lots of things at once. You don't need to have multiple SSH sessions connected to your Raspberry Pi for each individual thing that you're trying to do. You can just use Tmux. Once you've connected, run Tmux and then do what you want to do using the, the, the shortcuts that I've just explained. And what also happens is if I lose connection now, so if I press F11, so we're back out of the full screen, I will open a new tab. Now we're back on Windows now, remember. I'm going to open a new tab and I'm going to close the one on the left. We've disconnected now. We're no longer connected to that Raspberry Pi. Normally, without Tmux, all of that that I've just started would be stopped now. It would no longer be running. It would have failed. But if we remote connect back on uh, to the 
pi, so we're going to SSH back onto the pi. And what you can see if we, well, we'll just clear that down, but if we do T, M, U, X, and then L, S for list, list sessions, it's going to show us, oh, there's, there's one session already running on the, the pi in Tmux. Well, let's reconnect back to this session. So Tmux attach, uh, and then it's minus T, and then the number at the beginning. The number here is zero, so we're just going to type zero. Bang, we're straight back in, exactly where we were originally. All those things are still running. We're still watching Star Wars on the Telnet session, and everything else that we started is still running as well. So just think about this in terms of amateur radio. If you're telnetting on, sorry, if you're SSHing onto a Raspberry Pi or any Unix server, and you're starting things manually so that you can see that, see it running on the screen, then this is a really cool way to do it because if you disconnect and then reconnect back later, it's still going to be running and uh, you don't have to restart everything every time you SSH onto the machine. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, hit the like, and if you really want to see more things like this, then let me know in the comments and uh, maybe I'll do some more kind of tutorials on programming and command lines and uh, server admin, all that kind of stuff. If you're not interested, <laughs> let me know about that as well. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. GetStationMaster.com